know, Mike, I don't know if you know this, yeah, Mike should get but I did, a, uh, I did a cartoon uh, that was set in New York. Did you? Mm-hmm. Open to the show of the World Trade Center. Oh, that's right. Here's First the, thing you think. Here's my contribution to the critic. This is my famous line. Aachen. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it well. No, you know why? Because I was doing my lines, and then, and then I had more, and I think Marie, or somebody started cut me off. I was like, I had more. I'm like, so then I got to, ah, I'm like, be quiet. I <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't touch it. Why am I the not critic is well, a mystery. No one knows what he thinks. <laughs> okay, so. a dedicated viewer. I remember that. Remember when uh, Sammy was a little girl? And I said, hey, Sammy, what's your favorite show? She said, The Critic. And Mike says, what a lovely show. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing. To, I didn't work on The Critic, you know. Mike, just so you know, it's Gets like. no time at all. It's like Family Guy now. Remember, they canceled Family Guy yeah. and then it became a big oh, yeah. thing and they brought it back. That's yeah. what The Critic is. Yeah. I'll write That's that, what I keep that's trying amazing. to tell you guys. I'll write to Al today. I mean, for all. Well, didn't, when you wrote the show, it was originally supposed to be a live-action show starring yes. John. Yes, it was. Which I said, which I've also said, that? let's do that. Yes. Because I'm dying to do a multi-camera sitcom. Let's do it. Okay. Do the critic. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> let's do it John. It isn't is up I'll to let Jeff you. Moore, Jeff what? What? <laughs> I'm touring Civil War Battlefield. Okay, fine. <laughs> Tell Gamble and Pross. <laughs> yeah. Go to them. Okay. They want to do a show. Them, and go to Jim Brooks and go, Jim, let's do the sitcom. I... I just wanted money. You're, you're, you're I mistaking me for my wife. <laughs> it's time to do it, Jim. Jim, get off your butt. You do it. Let's. John's better than ever. And there's so much more stuff you could comment ball. on. Killed. Killed. Oh. Oh. You sang uh, I Hate Every Chimp I See, right? No, that was. Yeah, but my. No, 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 no. I, I, I my funniest right. joke was the one I made up. Well, the, the funniest yeah, was the ones I made up. Like, let the show begin. Because I thought that's why I'm coming in. I go, I'm coming yeah. in so late. Are we on? I wasn't going to interrupt. All right, all right, I'll tell you that joke later. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke ending career. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I don't know how to describe this, but I would like to welcome John Lovitz to the show. Also from The Simpsons, Mike Reese and Jeff Martin. How are you guys? Very good. Very well, thank you. <laughs> Surprised to be here. It is. Yeah. Uh, I had to, uh, They're invading my interview. <laughs> How rude. Uh, we are supposed to interview John, and then there was a big uh, uh, statue unveiling at Fox Next Door for uh, Bart Simpson and Nancy Cartwright, and these guys just happened to be there. I was talking to them for a little bit. And they said, it was nice talking to you. I have to go interview John Lovitz. And they said, oh, John's here. Can oh, we come okay. say hi? Now I get it. Mike goes, we were just happened to be walking through. I go, you happen to be passing, walking through the 36th floor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, as you know, co-created The Critic with Al Jean. Yes. And I am The Critic. Are you tired of talking about The Critic? No, I've been trying to get him to do it. <laughs> Everyone goes, do The Critic, do The Critic. And I said, Mike, why don't we do it again? Because to me, it's like Family Guy, which was canceled off of Fox. And then got a big cult following, and now there's it, people. It's just sitting there. Right. It's like a sleeping giant. <laughs> but Mike, <laughs> like is, North Mike Korea. goes well. I'm like a sleeping hippo. Hi hippo. I'm still writing and I'm for him. Sleepy, and I don't <laughs> want to do it. Maybe you need to get it like on the front page of Netflix or re-release the, the DVDs with a big promotion, and then that gets the buzz going. And then look, critics coming back in September. I think you know, he's people, right. But here's the truth. On Twitter, everyone goes, why aren't you doing The Critic? Why are you going to do it? So now you're here. You can hear the answer from the creator of the show, along with Al Jean, Mike Reese. Mike, John what is Lovitz, your answer to those fans? John Lovitz is the most unpleasant man in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I never wanted to work with him again. I can hear you. Oh, my God. So Mike, you're dead. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> and you're looking right at him. Yes. <laughs> now, that aside, but what about The Critic? The, the Critic... I, the critic, I, he convinced me. We Let's get do this it greenlit. Again. It was hard. I don't want to do it anymore. Al Jean has an actual job, but if we can get it going, I'll be happy to see more of the critic. I, I will. Because it was it. hard. It was hard work. <laughs> Everything's was, hard work. Well, <laughs> not being a voice of the critic, and you would do it live action. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a sitcom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that'd be yeah. even better. I'd love to. All right. That's it. I won't stand in the way. I just don't want to do it. You yeah. just heard from Mike, Mr. Lazy Reese. <laughs> Mike, and Jeff I'm hasn't said a word. I, I had nothing to do with the critic. Jeff's a great writer. What yeah. did you write, Streetcar Named Marge? Yeah, I did. And, right? Uh, and yeah, won an I got Emmy? my name on that episode. 
I didn't win an Emmy for that one, but uh, oh. has many, many. Oh, they did, oh we did the uh, we did the uh, the commentary on the DVD. That was it. That's yeah, you I sort of took over the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, hello, oh, the writers are going to yap. Yeah. It, 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 it was appropriate that you did so. John, how do you remember all this stuff so well, and yet you called me Al for three years? You never got my name right. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, I know, that's true. Because Al Jean, he has two first names. So I kept thinking it's Al and Jean forever. <laughs> so that's so Jean and this is Al. Al. No, I'm Mike. Wait, this what? is why I don't want to do I the thought critic. it was Al and Gene. <laughs> John had some great characters on The Simpsons being Artie Ziff and uh, Llewellyn Sinclair for A Streetcar Named Marge. And you've got a chance to recreate... Yeah, and Artie Ar- Ziff is completely different than Jay Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is, Jay, this is Artie Ziff. Hello, I'm Artie Ziff. And this is Jay Sherman. Hello, I'm Jay Sherman. See, night and day. Is, uh, yeah. I'm Such Jay range. Sherman. I'm Artie Ziff. It's completely <laughs> it's different. And it's like were... he's so fine and my sweet lord. Totally different. <laughs> <laughs> and you were also the uh, art teacher when Marge oh, painted yes. Ringo. Anyone remember that character's name? No, no but no. I remember doing it. No, but, but he had the he had the Van Dyke, right? He was bald. Yes, bald. He was had bald. He had Dyke, glasses. Yeah. He and said, uh, when he had to go to the bathroom, he said, uh, uh, "If you'll forgive me." Nature calls. Nature calls. Yeah, okay. only that's not. A, give the read. Can you? I think. What would I say now? If you forgive me, I have to vacuum out my inner. <laughs> no, no. It was. It was just. Uh, no. It was just a line in the script. I remember, and it was. You know. Now, if you'll forgive me, nature calls, and you just went. Now, if you'll forgive me, nature calls. And you just <laughs> turned it up to eleven, and it was holy cow! I didn't know that was a big laugh. <laughs> what great writers we are. <laughs> Do you get the? Um, someone had the line. Excuse me, Marge. I don't take criticism well. Or not, I <laughs> yeah, don't take yeah. praise well. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> he was just just <laughs> he was hollering. It was great. <laughs> no, and I did. They were, but they're great. Right? They're the best writers. These guys, you know, comedy. And I remember there was a oh, the streetcar named Mar- Marge, and I'm directing a play. I'm Lennon Sinclair. I'm the director. I've had three heart attacks. I'm looking for no. I've directed three plays, and I've had three heart attacks. I'm looking forward to a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> well, as so often happens, uh, my name's on the script, but I believe that was Jim Brooks's line. So. <laughs> uh, is, is it amazing that the characters that you portrayed on The Simpsons still get quoted and, and still are brought up to this day, especially with FXX doing the, you know, the big Simpsons marathons and rerunning everything? I didn't know that they still get quoted, but I remember being asked to do it, and I was thrilled. I just thought, you know, it's the funniest show and the, the best writers... The best comedy writers are on The Simpsons, as Mike and Al are, and, 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 and Jeff, and, and I was always thrilled to do it. And yeah, it does surprise me because I, you know, I haven't done, I don't haven't done that many shows out of the uh, out many, of the long run. Yeah, maybe I've done I don't know. Half oh, dozen? how many less Simpsons? than t- maybe fifteen? I mean, which is not nothing, but how many out of six hundred? Yeah, yeah. So it's flattering, but but what I always like to do is um get Dan Castellano does Homer and Julie Kavner does Marge and then and Al's very funny you know really and Mike too they're like two of the nicest guys and always sincere so I say Al Al I, I have an idea and then I would just get uh, Artie Ziff and, and, and Dan and Julie like having sex in the three way and doing it and I was like we can't use that I go why not and it, but it would make us laugh but Al and I'd always say to Dan and Julie let's, let's say this and this like we're having sex and they're like yeah 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 <laughs> and just to hear them do it in those voices, it just kills me, you know? Why aren't those on the DVD outtakes? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Simpsons porn people haven't seen. But it's not know, official. What we're holding that back for. I, I know the, the animators would draw just oh, some yeah. graphic stuff, and it was it was so disturbing. You'd think, oh, this will be fun, Marjorie Somer having sex. And it was just... Just filthy and chill. It was oh. worse than seeing your parents have sex. One like, that was more, dis- yeah, it wasn't so uh, filthy, but it was disturbing. Was uh, when uh, Homer was kissed by uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein. Harvey, Harvey Firestein. Firestein. Harvey Firestein did that, and he said, "My mother told me never to kiss a fool," and kissed Homer. And uh, do you remember this drawing? No. It was it was Homer. It was uh, Carl. It was Carl. Carl. Oh, Carl. When, right. When Homer got hair. Yeah. Homer Sampson, I think, was maybe the name of the episode. And uh, the animators had drew a picture of Homer in bed looking troubled, like with an obvious erection. (laughs) 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 And in the thought balloon was uh, the moment when uh, 
Harvey Firestein and kissed him. Told me never to kiss a fool. (laughs) And uh, whose house is this artwork hanging in? (laughs) (laughs) Again, this was just a little underground. Oh, by the way, animators did for fun. Now back to the Simpsons. (laughs) Well, it is astounding that anything you ever did on the Simpsons is remembered because we did. Mike and I. Yeah, they made three toys of my characters. I know. Wow. Yes. How much did you get for that, Chad? Look, there's already Ziff. Nothing. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm flattered, and they use my voice. Yes. Oh, yeah. Where's my oh, money? Wow. And there's a Llewellyn Sinclair figure, too. There's a hey. real Artie Ziff, too. Where's I mean, my money? There's a, That was one of those names. I think it was a friend of Sam Simons, and we used his name, and now he's a character. Oh, well, uh, then there was, like when I was in the Llewellyn, ground, I had an English teacher in ninth grade. It was Llewellyn Smith was his name. Well, I was in the, in the Groundlings Theater, and there's two guys in the Groundlings, and their names are characters on the show, oh. which is... Uh, uh, professor was a Hibbert. Doctor Hibbert. Doctor Hibbert and Professor Frank, which is John Frank, who's a writer on the show. I got him the job. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Steve Hibbert, who's in the Growling. Steve Urkel, the real life Steve Urkel, is the guy I feel for. Yes, <laughs> he was named. That's because a, a guy named guy. Jay Cogan, who used to write and direct in The Simpsons, he was in the Growlings and knew Frank and Hibbert. I think he put the, he put those names in there. Well, that's the best. I bet you don't even know. It's the best. Simpsons trivia stumper is who is Dr. Hibbert named after? What famous performer? And he's named after Julia Sweeney because Dr. Hibbert was originally a woman named Julia Hibbert, which was Julia Sweeney's married name. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. There you go. But yeah, my. No, but Julia Sweeney, no, I don't think you're right. I Julia Sweeney was dating Steve Hibbert. <laughs> Why would he make that story they were up? Married, right? I don't know, but that, but it's, <laughs> but it's Steve Hibbert. It's but his name. It's Julius Hibbert. It was, Ju- and she was Ju- Julia. I think Hibbert. I would know better than you. <laughs> what do you do in your? By the way, John? Mike Reese got his name <laughs> when he married his wife Denise, and she changed her last name to Reese. <laughs> Mike and I were on some panel uh, That's like that. in, in, in uh, Hollywood like I don't know, six months ago, uh, just about you know one of these Simpsons fans things. And the guy, the moderator, got up there and said, dental plan, and the whole audience just chanted, Lisa has braces. It was like, <laughs> wow. That they're, just, they're, they're all Pavlovian trained um, 24 I, years <clears throat> after that episode. I, I have out. to ask you. There, oh, you want to ask me something? I yeah, want to ask John something. Um, I feel bad, anyone tuning in to hear John. There's a lot of times where you've had classic lines from Simpsons, from Critic, from Saturday Night Live. Yes. Does it annoy you when people do the imitations of you? Especially like when the, uh, the acting line. Do people do no, that in front of you? No, it's very flattering. It, it means they remember the character and they're imitating me. No, no, it doesn't annoy me at all. So No, it's flattering. All right, I'm just I mean, you, should, you know, it, it makes you feel good. You know, it's, it, it's, I mean, that's what I wanted. You know, you want people to, you want to do memorable performances, and when, so when they, that's the way of letting you know they remember. Why did and they, they like it? So it's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good. You know, thing, Peter, you know? the late Peter Falk. People, the only thing people ever, ever yelled at him, I heard, was, "Where's your raincoat? Where's your <laughs> overcoat?" <laughs> and he said, "I never, I never have a good answer to that." <laughs> It's not here. What was with the gag at SNL 40? Were you aware that they were going to keep saying that you were dead throughout yeah. the whole show? <laughs> well, they first they said I was going to be in the Jeopardy sketch. I didn't even know I was going to be in the thing. Then they go, yeah, yeah, you'll be in it. Then they go, okay, we're putting you in the Jeopardy sketch. Then they call, they go, no, that's not happening. You'll be in Steve, Steve Higgins, the head writer, goes, you'll be in Steve Martin's monologue. And then he goes, okay, well, here's what it is that we say. He says that you, you know, remembering the great ones. And then he mentions you, too. And then we cut to you, and you're like, hey. <laughs> I go, okay, that's funny. So then I get there, and they go, no. As I saw, I say, hey. No, no, you're not, you don't have a line. We just cut to you. I go, oh, I cut my one line. And then, and then Lauren said, well, you're in it once. Do you want to be in it? If you want to do it. They, and then he goes, we, Steve Higgins said, we could put you in the end of the memoriam. And Lauren laughed. He goes, once is enough for me. He goes, it's up to you if you want to do it. So I said, yeah, it's funny. Because to me, it's like the show would do humor where – I, not, growing up watching it, you know, in high school, I'd, in college, I'd watch it. I go, I can't believe they said that, and it was so funny. But your jaw would drop open, you know, and to and and they would do dark, edgy jokes that were really funny, and, and to me, that was one of those jokes where they're saying someone's dead, and the guy's right in the audience, and it's me. And Steve goes, "You're the only guy that could like it'll make it could take it and be funny." And, well, I you think- know, I, I have a sense of humor about myself, so I, I I laugh at myself, so I was. 
I thought it was very funny. I think they made the right choice because every time they cut to you, you played it off very well. Like you didn't realize they were going to do it. And you're like, what Dang. the? F- <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got you it. You said to me once, you were talking about maybe you were 23 and you were an unknown. And then six months later, everybody was imitating you. It was probably the Well, I was 20. Yeah, when I got started live, I was 28 and. 28. Yeah, I was un- unknown and then. And then. Uh, totally unknown. And then I got started live and. You know, in October, and three months later, the whole country's imitating me. But I'd never heard it, and because uh, yours is in the building, you know, eighty hours a week working, and and, and everyone's saying everyone's imitating you. And one a friend of mine, she was in this girl, a rock band. She was we're traveling the country. Everybody's imitating you, but I never hear it. Hmm. And then I was in March. I was in Los Angeles, and I'll never forget driving down uh, Fountain Boulevard, and all of a sudden this commercial comes on for oh. uh, this. Riverside Raceway, and the guy starts imitating me in the commercial. And my jaw dropped open. I was like, was "I'm a, not being paid for that." <laughs> what are you it was saying? so weird. Saying and that's and then, the ticket or something like that. Yeah, he goes Riverside Raceway. He goes, yeah, that's it. We get your ticket, and he starts yeah doing it. The liar. And then uh, and then I did a comic relief if in March of '86 uh, and uh, Wh- Whoopi Goldberg. I done a movie with her, and she invited me to do it. So I did that, and I'm doing my liar character, and all of a sudden the whole crowd goes nuts. And you see my eyes light up because it's the first time I really heard outside of SNL people knowing it. And I went, oh, they know it. And, he, and I get this huge smile on my what face. What a great feeling. Wow. Yeah, Where it was did it great. Where did come from? Where did you get the character? Um, it, well, it started a friend of mine. I liked her. And she goes, well, I like a guy with a fat wallet. And I go, oh, well, my dad just had 15 oil wells come in. <laughs> and, and I said, well, I am a pathological liar. And then I met, met this guy once that lied. And then. And then I th- I liked the the movie The Thin Man, old movies, and there was a character, and they're going, yeah, that's the ticket. They were grilling this guy, and so I did. The, and so it's a combination of that, and then of like you know at, at uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, <coughs> you know they'd say people get up and say my name Bob and hi Bob, and I go well here's my story. So I remember thinking it would be f- we had to do a thing in the Groundlings. I was in the Sunny Company. So I what if it was a guy like he's instead of Alcoholics Anonymous, he's a Pathological Liars Anonymous. So that, I just had the first two lines. Hello, my name is Tommy Flanagan. and I'm a member of Pathological Liars Anonymous. In fact, I, I, I'm the president of that organization. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the guy would just start lying about it, you know. And then, and then they'd ask questions, and they go, "How long have you been lying?" I go, "I don't know what you're talking about." And this girl, Robin Schiff, was a big writer. She goes, "John, John, you set it up perfect." She goes, "Don't you could say anything and it'll work." I go, "What do you mean?" She goes, "Just don't, just don't say you're not lying. Just answer." I'll ask you anything. So she goes, try, just say it in character. She goes, I said, okay. She goes, okay, what's your favorite sport? And I went, um, uh, 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 bowling. And it was just funny because you knew he's lying. And, and why, <laughs> you know, and then, and I went, oh my God. And I was like, I hit it. Like, uh, the hardest thing is like, have, come up with like a simple but uh, idea, but that's great that like just writes itself. Right. And I, I like, she had to point it out to me. She goes, you, you did that. I didn't even see it. And then, and then I wrote a monologue of like a guy to AA, and then we got to do it on the Tonight Show. Jim McCauley found all the com- booked all the comics on the Tonight Show, booked the Groundlings, and you can see it online. So that was my first time on. It. Oh, I did on the Tonight Show. I did. I was on TV once before in the paper chase, the second year on Showtime, but that was like on you know NBC and the Tonight Show, and I did it, and I was thrilled and. I was took backstage off. that night. I, I used to write for Johnny Carson, and you were there. And I was there watching the. Here's the Groundlings. I, I remember the, it was three acts, and you were one of them. I go, wow, that I just knew it. I said that is really funny. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, not what what a small. That? I didn't know you were there. Yes. That is a small world. Well, gentlemen, we're running out of time. And uh, now, thirty years later, there. you're here. Here I am. On my interview. <laughs> Can I tell you're you? You're welcome. You got time? I want to tell the first time I, John Lovitz talked to me because I didn't know him, and we're sitting at the Simpsons uh, studio, <laughs> and I'm reading the paper. I said, "Gee, they're killing people in downtown L.A. for their Rolexes," and John goes, "Like this one." <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> uh, John Levitz, <coughs> if he doesn't die right here, do you want yes. to get the rest of the plug? <laughs> and I want to thank Mike and Jeff for writing me parts and this critic, and, and a real honor. Thanks for letting us crash this. Thanks, man. Yeah. You make everything funny. John Lovitz, thank you so much. Mike Reese and Jeff Martin from The Simpsons for coming in. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk to you guys again soon. Do um, you also have and a podcast? Mike and Al used to date, not anymore. Oh, Wait. thank you very much, John. I do appreciate your time. <laughs> All right, thank you.